Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Hani Sirag from Egypt, part of the People's Health Movement as well as part of the Democratic Movement in Egypt. Hani, good to have you with us. Yeah, thank you. Nice to be here. Egypt has of course sparked a global democratic imagination. There was no question that this has been the single most important event at least this year. How do you think it's going at the moment? Well, um, just before the 25th of January, nobody in Egypt and I think nobody outside could believe that this would happen in Egypt. So what happened was quite remarkable uh, for people in, in, in Egypt and people uh, uh, outside. Even during the revolution, during the 18 days, people were waiting to know what's going to happen where it's, 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 it's going to, to end. And there are lots of factors affected the sequence of the revolution till it ended up by falling down of the regime and the head of reg the regime, actually. So basically, it was a change of the president, his Mubarak having to leave. Would you, would you really call it a change of regime? Well, I would say it's, it, it's, it's not a change of the whole regime but it's also more than Mubarak himself. So it's, it's not the president, it's a big part of those who governed Egypt for very long years. So the choices are quite open right now uh, because the army is in charge right now. The army is, cannot control one direction. It can try to push for a direction, but it cannot control it. And it's not ideological. It doesn't have the ideological background that can push for one direct direction or another. The recent the referendum that took place on the constitutional changes, it seems that it was opposed by a large section of the people who were in Tahrir Square, who were the leaders of the movement, if you call it uh, leaders in that sense. Uh, what do you think happened and why did they oppose uh, the referendum, the, what was placed for the referendum? Uh, first of all, I would say that the uh, referendum was of no value at all. Because even after the referendum, the constitution was cancelled. All of it was on hold. And after that, there is a declaration, constitutional declaration by the military council. And it will, it, it's going to, we, we are going to continue with it till the new constitution. So this means that the army, after organizing the uh, referendum, they put the whole constitution on hold. So Partly responding to the anger of the people that this was really uh, not this is fair. What, in this some is sense. what they, they, they said, but I believe the whole story of the uh, referendum was to test the um, uh, uh, the directions, different directions inside the uh, uh, Egyptians because and and also to uh, uh, test the power of different parties and different political forces inside the uh, uh, in the Egyptian street. The Muslim Brothers and the fundamentalists uh, played a very big role in the uh, results of the uh, uh, referendum. I would say if you look at the uh, results very closely, you're going to find that in Cairo, it was nearly 50-50. I mean, 50% 50 nearly said yes and 50 said no. But whenever you go away from the center, you will find the percentage completely imbalanced. And also, it goes to, to great extent towards Yes, to the, the, the modifications with the concentration of fundamentalists and Muslim brothers. In addition, it's, I'm afraid to say that, but it's linked somehow to the uh, 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 illiteracy. To the? Illiteracy. Okay. So this this what what, what happened. Uh, and what, 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 what the army said is there are four millions said no. And so the army was happy to uh, um, have like uh, 14 million said yes. So they agreed on these articles. So all the articles 
the uh, referendum made for were in the uh, constitutional declaration after that, but because four million said no, so they cancelled, they, they, they put the constitution on hold. But effectively the referendum was really about also when to hold the elections and quicker the elections it was believed that the traditional parties which were earlier governing with Mubarak and company as well as the Muslim brother would be better placed. That's really the reason for the opposition of a large section of the activists. This is a big fear in Egypt because the early elections mean that the most organized powers are going to be in charge. So, and apparently they were the remnants of the old regime in addition to Muslim brothers and other fundamentalism, fundamentalist groups. However, after the uh, referendum, there was a historical uh, uh, judge by uh, uh, the court in Egypt to uh, pan the national party. So the party itself is not a power anymore right now. And we strongly believe that uh, people, the remnants of, of the party, are not going to establish a new one, but instead they, are, they will try to put themselves in other parts. So it's kind of dilution. So, the National Party is the party of Mubarak and company. Exactly. Yeah, uh, uh, that's it. And the heads, all the heads of, of this party are in the prison right now. Actually, it's, it's, it's kind of a strange scene because mostly the whole old ministry with Mubarak's sons are in the prison. So there, there, there was a fear among the Egyptian population that those people would establish a, a counter-revolution when they are in the prison if they are allowed to uh, talk together and have mobile phones. All of them are there. I mean, so this was a second step the military council took and wasn't very much expected, to be, to be honest. Do you think this is a response to the renewed movement bringing people onto Tahrir Square, a section of the army, those small section, joining the protesters again in Tahrir Square? Yes, I think it was a very strong message to the military council that the Egyptian street is still able to accommodate millions of people, so it didn't finish. So whenever the military council is slow in doing what they have to do, millions of people came down to Tahrir Square again. And lots of actions by the military councils were taken on Wednesday or Thursday, one night before the, 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 the big protest, the, before one million people in, in Tahrir Square. So these Friday's protests kept huge pressure on the military council to go on with the, the changes. And this started with changing the prime minister, we had the old prime minister from Mubarak's regime. The military council tried to keep him for a long time. Suleiman. So, no, after Suleiman, Shafiq. Shafiq. Yeah, Ahmad Shafiq. And there were like two million in Tahrir Square on a Friday. So just on Thursday, the military council, when they knew that it's planned for, it's going to happen, they changed him. So we, we, we had a new prime minister from Tahrir Square itself. Coming back to the issue of the movement, do you think the movement will be able in that sense to leave an imprint in terms of new parties, left and democratic parties coming to the front in the time that you have for the elections? I, I think that the, the movement in the Egyptian street is able and will continue able able to push for a change. But the direction of this change, this is the problem. Because there is no unity in, in, in this movement, the demands of the uh, revolution were more and more, were basically against the uh, 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 Mubarak's regime, but there was no consensus on what to do after that. So one of the slogans, for example, is the uh, social justice, but there is no agreement on what social justice we, 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 we want, how uh, 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 to do it. Basically, there are three or four fractions right now. One of them is the Muslim Brothers, and I don't think they are 
very strong right now because there is internal division inside the Muslim uh, uh, brother. And Do you think the Muslim brothers could go the line of the Turkish Justice Party, for instance, Islamic roots, but somehow willing to work within the secular framework? Uh, I think they will be pushed to do that even if they don't want to. Uh, because even inside them there is a division because young people wanted wider space because when they were working underground the loyalty was a very big thing so everybody should uh, obey because the uh, uh, state security is following them but now when it's open people can say whatever they, 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 they want the younger generation asking for wider space and actually they ask it to separate the political party totally from the Muslim Brothers group. Do you think also the fact that the Muslim Brothers kept away initially from the movement while the youth, your younger sections of the Muslim Brotherhood did join it much earlier, That's do you think all this is going to make a directional change in the Muslim Brotherhood itself? Exactly, you're very right. The young generation in the Muslim Brothers, they felt that they were in Tahrir Square, they were in the revolution from the very beginning while the old guards were quite hesitant in the uh, beginning. So, after the, the revolution won, they wanted different role in the Muslim Brothers. And even the, till the moment, I strongly believe that the old guards of Muslim Brothers didn't realize how big is this division? They deal with it as if it's kind of a generation problem and it's, it, it, it's gonna go. But I think it's a real thing will divide the Muslim brothers to a great extent. So you think that overall terms, the change is definitely to take place, is going to take place. But the direction, how much, how far, these are questions still to be resolved in Egypt. The change towards more democracy, free elections, things like that will happen. Universal. Yeah, but there are two very big issues. One of them is the economic direction, and the other thing, the role of Egypt in the Middle East. Not, not only its relation with Israel, but the role Egypt is playing in the, in the, in the Middle East to keep peaceful atmosphere for Israel. And I think these are the two big challenges. There is a huge, I think, uh, uh, pressure from the West to keep the uh, uh, neoliberal feature of the uh, Egyptian economy as it is. And I think this is supported from uh, uh, some of the strong uh, fractions inside the uh, um, uh, political movement right now in, in Egypt, especially the uh, uh, businessmen who appeared even in Mubarak's era in a nice way, they are not corrupted and they are nationalist things. Like, they started now to establish their parties. One of them called Nagib Sawiras, who is a very big businessman, the richest. One of the richest in person. The richest. One of the richest person in the world in any case. Exactly. Exactly. And in very few weeks he could have sixty thousand signatures for the party. And this is very huge. So I think this will be the second power in the coming parliament. So neoliberal economics is, of course, one issue on which there will be struggles and there will be differences. But the geostrategic shift is also very going to be very difficult to stop. The amount it may shift may still be an issue. But the shift is visible already in terms of what we see, the Fatah and the Hamas being coming together in Cairo. I think that that role of Egypt not no longer being such a firm, staunch ally of Israel is also on the cards. This is a real shift and not just a game. I mean, the relation with Israel from the Arab nations, we learned a lot, a lot from it. It can change from time to, 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 to time in kind of games but not a real shift. An American army, the American political forces and the Egyptian army have very deep ties. So that's uh, the other part of it. So this is something to watch. What is the direction of change, how far it goes. But Egypt is in time for a change and will come back 
hand it to you again on these issues. Thank you.